This is GGRN 101 Sociology of Inequality guest lecture, and I'm Dr. Tanya Pobeda. I'm a recent graduate of the TMU, Toronto Metropolitan University, and York University's Communication and Culture Program. So here's a picture of me, a couple of pictures actually, and I just thought you might want to see my face as I do this animated video as opposed to a Zoom recording. I hope you like it. Of course, Twitter now is an even greater hellscape, but some good things happened on Twitter in the past. One of them was that I was connected with Our Family Plays Games, which is a family based in Omaha, Nebraska, that is focused on creating greater inclusivity in board gaming and gaming spaces. And we were connected on Twitter. I loved all of the stuff that they were producing, and they invited me to join their channel on YouTube. And it's one of the best things I get to do every single month. Look at how the Fitch family is embracing the old school tradition and inspiring families all over the country to roll the dice. I'm Carla. I'm Mick. And we are Our Family Plays Games. From Ticket to Ride and Settlers of Catan, even throwing it back to New York 1901, the Fitch family is all in. I'm using strategy. Uh, okay, all right. The dynamic duo, Starla and Mick, collecting more than 250 games, spending hours each week sharing recommendations with their 2,700 YouTube subscribers. So many people don't really realize how many new board games they have out there. That's what we're here for. With honest feedback. The rules weren't that clear. So let me say something right now. In a little loving banter. I don't really yeah. like always letting him use my train to complete his route. Here we go, y'all. Yeah. We just want to tell people about board games. Yeah. People from all over the world are saying how much they love what we say and how we say it. And we appreciate that. The couple often plan against their son, Grant, who also edits and manages their YouTube page. The experience is a true family affair, and they hope to share their spirit with others. We really want to show that African-American families or people of color really do play games. That's why we decided we need to go on and do something and be the change that we want to see. Reminding us it's okay to let loose. Don't be afraid of it. I mean, it's, there's no shame in saying, I love board games. I love board games. No matter how old you are, there's always time for fun and games. Our family plays games, loves games. Yes. So I was doing research for my PhD dissertation, looking at issues in the board gaming community, the analog gaming community, the tabletop community, whatever you want to call it, the rise of board games, as well as problems with inclusion and diversity in the space. And this is what attracted uh, attention to me um, and attracted um, Miklos and Starla Fitch, who run Our Family Plays Games. They were really intrigued by some of the findings that I was sharing online. One of the first things that I identified is in the top 400 Board Game Geek ranked games, 92.6% uh, of those games were designed by white men. In addition, 76.8% of the nearly 2,000 figures that I recorded uh, were men or boys, so appeared to be male. The other thing I looked at was the imagery on the cover art of the top 200 board game geek ranked games. And I discovered of the nearly 2000 figures that I recorded, 82.5% of those human representations were white presenting figures. I conducted a visual analysis of the top 200 board game geek ranked games, counting nearly 2000 figures which included human representation, as well as any fauna, and that included fictional creatures as well. And what I discovered was you're more likely to see an alien, an orc, an ogre, a creature that does not exist, than you are to see an image of a human woman.
One of the biggest challenges with doing this work online, YouTube in particular, being a public scholar, is you're going to encounter trolls and lots of them. I have had a lot of encounters with mass troll um, attacks. I have had articles uh, published about me in the Daily Caller and Stephen Crowder's Louder with Crowder. Uh, you know, zero out of 10, do not recommend, recommend those experiences because gaming is a really contested space. But I felt pretty strongly that this was the kind of research that needed to see the light of day, even though I even had internal attacks against me in my own school where people would say, well, your research is really pointless. Nobody cares about this. Um, that was a couple of professors who would share that with me. But I got comments from the community uh, directly to me with uh, this kind of, of flavor. Our local board game convention is whiter than Wonder Bread, and the game designer club I attend has an all-male attendance 95% of the time. And this was a cis white man sharing with me that he wanted to see change. I'll drill a little bit more deeply into the online survey methodology in a moment, but this was a top-line finding. One of the questions posed the statement, the board gaming industry is dominated by white men. Now, I've been doing market research studies for a very long time using Likert scales, and it's pretty rare to see this level of passion. 61.9% strongly agreed with that statement, and 27.7% agreed leaving a total of 89.6% that is strongly agreed or agreed, a high level of passion with this statement. I conducted a survey in late 2020 of 320 avid board game participants who board game uh, on a self-reported basis 70.7% of the time, at least once a week. And these avid board gamers weighed in on issues of representation. What was also really interesting about the participants of my PhD dissertation survey is many of them, the, the majority of my sample, had been board gaming for over 11 years or more. What was also really great about my PhD dissertation survey is I intentionally recruited for diversity of my sample, and I wanted to make sure I was hearing from the voices of women, LGBTQ+, uh, non-binary participants, trans women, trans men, uh, agender individuals. I wanted a diversity of gender identities as well as racial identities to fill out the survey. And what I got was a sample size of 60.4% women, including trans women in the survey, because I very much wanted to hear from underrepresented voices in the board gaming community. About 20.4% of the participants of the online survey self-identified as Black, Indigenous, or persons of color. That was a little lower than I wanted, but it definitely got a great participation rate from very, very active BIPOC board gamers in this sample. The other wonderful thing about the online survey is I had terrific representation and participation from LGBTQ plus gamers who were really, really invested both in the hobby and in the industry, and they represented just over half of my sample. The survey respondents agreed at 31.3% of the time that they had experienced homophobic remarks while participating in the hobby. I've been doing this research for about four years and I feel so strongly, despite everything, that I have to keep going because I get comments like these. I had an individual email me this um, through the uh, messaging function of Board Game Geek, and this uh, message is shared with permission. This individual wrote me and said, I've been board gaming a long time, and while there are times I won't say things because I don't want to draw attention. I absolutely refuse to leave the room. Sometimes that's the only activi activism we have. And comments like these drive me because I really want to make sure that I am using my white privilege to share some of these stories um, with the wider community and use some of the, the skill set that I gathered in industry to make some changes in contested spaces like gaming. Some of the qualitative feedback that I heard from respondents really broke my heart. This one is a good example of the types of 
feedback I got from some of the trans men and women that filled out the survey. Uh, in this particular case, this respondent re replies, I haven't been out for very long, so I haven't engaged with the board gaming community outside of personal friends presenting female. There were other qualitative comments like this one. This respondent said, in fact, I am highly respected at our local convention and people come to me if they want to learn an awesome game. Yes, there are guys there who don't believe me at first and make it tough, but th when they realize I'm the only one with the answer they needed, and they realize that I'm not as dim-witted as they thought. Lots of perspectives about participation in industry events and the sexism, racism, homophobia, and transphobia that can kind of be threaded through those types of encounters. One of the really interesting findings of my PhD dissertation research is the interplay between representation in board gaming artwork, in the themes, in the stories that are told within the games, as well as in the labor of board game design, how that interplay impacts embodied play within public board gaming spaces. And in this case, an individual wrote in, I'm never going to see Indigenous people represented as anything other than barbarians in need of civilization. I've stopped caring for the most part because if I cared, I'd be mad all the time, and I don't have the mental energy for that anymore. And what's fascinating about some of these findings is that the level of discontent these avid board gamers feel for the hobby that they love. 66.4% of the people who filled out my survey for my PhD dissertation reported agreeing or strongly agreeing to the statement, I have experienced incivility, being talked over, interrupted, talked down to, dismissed or ignored while participating in the board gaming hobby. 26.6% of survey respondents agreed or strongly agreed that they have experienced unwelcome sexual advances while participating in the board gaming hobby. The participants shared stories like this one. A guy massaged my head without consent and tried a second time. One of the big ideas about the research I conducted for my PhD dissertation research was that this delimits the entire board gaming role-playing tabletop industry. The lack of welcome, the lack of inclusivity, the homogeneity of the play spaces in which people enter um, creates a huge risk management problem for the entire gaming sector. And one of the big top-line findings that I'm sharing as widely as I possibly can with publishers, with industry types, is this one, which is before the global pandemic, I sometimes felt out of place while I attended board gaming events outside my home. And this got a very high level of agreement with 40.6% agreeing with that statement and 8.4% strongly agreeing. This is a pool of very avid board gamers, not people who left the hobby because they didn't like what they saw. And this is a real alarm bell as a market researcher myself, looking at this level of discontent with the play experiences um, encountered within board gaming, um, within the board gaming hobby, is a huge delimiting factor for the growth of the overall market and um, stellifies and stunts the hobby itself. So this is a big, big finding and something that I'm sharing with publishers, uh, game industry professionals as widely as I can, because it is a real alarm bell for the industry. I feel incredibly strongly as a public scholar and a human being that this is the time to push back hard against transphobia, homophobia, sexism, racism, classism, we, ableism. We are all under siege right now. And I feel very, very strongly that it's my responsibility as a citizen and as a public scholar to push back against those forces. This is a comment um, by Canadian prolific, award-winning uh, game designer who is also black, saying that 
you know, most minority creators have battle scars so deep, I'm surprised we're still out here making games and video content. We're not publicly burning bridges over every transgression for hopefully obvious reasons. We have to balance our need for personal justice with the need to work. And that's the, the calcu calculus that we all have to do every single day. You know, what, what hill will we die on? And I feel really strongly that I can use my skill set to help um, lend my voice at minimum. All of these stories and perspectives shared through my online survey and qualitative interviews with avid board gamers gave me significant pause. Board gaming, all gaming, is meant to be an escape, a respite from the everyday. We're supposed to use it as an opportunity to de-stress from our jobs and our hectic lives, but not everyone has the same experience in board gaming as a respite, a break, a little island of calm and welcome in our very hectic lives. And one of the things that I've taken away from some of this research, as I did when I was working in public health, is these behaviors have real physical and mental impacts on those that experience them. It raises blood pressure, it creates issues for your long-term health. And that's why it's so important to have inclusive welcoming spaces. I'm going to land here on the quote by A.A. A. George, a writer I admire, who talked about how, for many of us, this is a quote, gaming is not simply a hobby, but a home. Let's make it both inclusive and diverse. And that's what our work is all about. And I want to thank the team at Our Family Plays Games. They are the best people. I love them so much. And it's something I get to do every single month, and it is such a privilege to do. So check out Our Family Plays Games on YouTube. They're readily found. My segment is called Schooled by Gru, which is my gaming nickname. I called myself Groshenka for years and years, and then shortened it to Gru. Um, so do check that out. Thank you all so very much. My thanks to Professor Lau, a colleague I really appreciate, who has been incredibly generous with advice and wisdom and feedback. I am really, really privileged to get a chance to speak to you all today. I'm so happy. If you wanna ask me any questions, you can reach me on Twitter. I'm also, I should put my Mastodon account up as well. I'll share that with the class, as well as my website. I am so keen to talk about the, the, this issue. If you are also interested in board game recommendations, I do that too. So thank you so much for your kind attention and giving me this opportunity.